good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Once again, another video by Tom Linton, product consultant here in North America. Today we're going to be talking about uh, web service calls again. So we have done a C sharp uh, version of this where we call our uh, web services, specifically the single sign on process uh, with web services in .NET, specifically C sharp. And uh, today we're going to be doing that in Java. So we had that intro, we got the, the C sharp or .NET one, and, and now we're moving on and doing a Java one. I guess this one should be the, the default, right? We're a Java application. So doing this in Java should be uh, the number one video we have out there. So we're going to be doing this in Java today, um, and we're going to start from scratch. We're, we're going to just have an empty project, and we're going to go through. We're going to make a, a, a single sign-on call, or in this case, we call it login user call to Yellowfin through web services, uh, writing it, of course, in Java. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we're, we're currently looking at the wiki right now. I always like to have this up because I do like to show where you can get to all the information that you need. So down here on the left, we would go to Developer Toolkit and the Web Services API. And today what we're doing is the Administration Services. This, we're going to do Administrative Service Call. Um, it, it again is the single sign-on process here. So if I click on single sign-on, it gives us a nice overview. There's a lot of documentation on here. Um, we've gone through and, and rewritten a lot of stuff. So thank you to the person that did this here in Yellowfin. It looks great. Now we're going to be calling the login user function here. There's also a, if I minimize this, there's a login user, no password. We'll talk about that as well and when to use it and how to use it, what you got to do. So that's no issue. But let's click on the login user and let's take a look at what we're going to need here. So if I look at the request elements, essentially we're going to have a request and we're going to receive a response. <laughs> it's it's that simple. Um, there's really nothing nothing to this. Um, so in that request, we need the login ID of uh, and, and this is important here to read the description. This is going to be the login ID of the admin user. So this is the person that is calling the web services not the person, in this case, we're doing the login user. This isn't the person that we're logging into Yellowfin. So this can be hard-coded into your application if you wanted to, and I kind of suggest that. Um, so this is always going to be the same user. They're always going to be the user that, that performs any sort of web service call for you. Um, however, you could make it dynamic if you wanted to. It's up to you how you want to do that. But anyways, we need the login ID and the password of that admin user. We need the org ID. It's always going to be one. <laughs> There's really nothing special about that. So it's just going to be an integer one. And then we want to pass the function in. So we're calling the login user function. Put that in there. And finally, the person and org ref code. The person is going to be the person that we're logging in. And if we come on down here, we can see the person is a nice little object here. And it's the user ID and password of that person that we're logging in. Org ref is if you have different client organizations, you can pass that org ref in. So that's gonna be important, uh, again, if you have client organizations, surprising. Um, and, and you can pass in that key that you set when you create that client organization, so that client key, whatever that may be. So that you would want that to be dynamic as well, uh, along with the person, you'd want that to be dynamic. But we'll talk about that a little bit more. So let's, uh, without further ado, go ahead and get started. So I got my clips up here and we're going to uh, start from literally the beginning. We have nothing. So we'll open up the, the package explorer here because I just have this project here called for fun um, as if coding was fun. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to go into this for fun project here and we're just going to create a new class and this is going to be a main class here. So instead of creating it like that, I'm just going to right click here and do that new class so that way it fills in my package and everything awesome okay so the name of this class let's call it uh oh, sso yeah we'll just call it sso <laughs> surprising and i didn't capitalize so we're going to call it sso and you know what i'll be a little better about this sso web service call you know you you'd obviously want to give it a better name um, I have never been known to give things great names. Most of the time when I'm coding, I give names of people in the office to variables, Tom, Matt, Tyler. <laughs> so uh, do better naming conventions than me. But I'm going to do this public static uh, void main because we're just going to be running this here. So we're just going to make this the uh, the main here. 
so that way we can actually run the web service and we'll finish that. All right, so up comes my nice auto-generated class here. Get rid of this to-do, I don't need it. Hit enter so we got some space. Okay, so first things first, we need to build the client, right? And we need to build all the objects and, and put all the stuff in the client. We're a SOAP web service, so you know we're gonna be doing this over XML. Um, gosh, doing all this manually would suck. To, <laughs> quite honestly, if I had to generate the XML um, all manually and try and get everything good to go and send it over SOAP, that's a pain in the butt. So why don't we use something that Yellowfin already has? And that's um, some of the libraries. So what I'm going to do is go to the build path here. And I'm going to configure my build path to add some external jars here. And really what I'm trying to do is grab jars for uh, uh, from Yellowfin. Excuse me. So if I go into my Yellowfin folder here, we'll run into the app server, web apps, root, web inf and lib so instead of going through and looking for all the dependencies because there's quite a few dependencies in here um, i just paused the video and i selected and went through the pain of looking at all the dependencies and which files or which jars that i actually need so instead of going through and, and having you watch me go through all the libs and trying to find the right files and all that the, these are the files that I actually needed. So I needed the access.jar, commons discovery.jar, commons logging, i4 core, i4 me, java mail, jax rpc, log 4j, and wisdom 4j. Um, those are the ones that I need. Again, you could be building your service client and everything the way you want. I'm just using what Yellowfin already has. Might as well leverage uh, their code so I don't have to go out and do anything on my own. So again, these are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine libraries that I need to make this happen. We'll go ahead and click OK and back to our code here. So what we need to do first here is create our objects for the, the WSDL. So we're getting that, we're generating functional stubs instead of uh, doing this a uh, different way. We're going to generate the functional stubs in Java and we're going to use those stubs to build our request, our response and the administration person. So first thing we need to do is build the actual um, administration service client. So to do that, we got to do a couple things here. We have to do administration uh, service service. So we're first classifying or creating, and I did the control um, space so I could get the little cheat sheet here. So I want administration service service, and we're going to call that administration service service. Oh. <laughs> that is not a great abbreviation, so we're going to add an L to the end, Administration Service Service Locator, um, because technically this is a locator once we're, once we're done. So it'll be uh, New Administration Service Service Locator. Just got to locate the locator. There it is. Uh, new Administration Service Service Locator. That's exactly what I want, except for it's going to have a few args in there. It's going to have this one. This is the exact one I want. Administration service service locator with four arguments because my arguments are essentially going to be what my server is. So localhost is the first one. That's uh, where my Yellowfin's hosted. Yours might be bi.foobar.com, whatever that may be. The second one's going to be the port that we're running on. So 7073 in this case. Third one is going to be where the service lives, and I'm just going to copy this. So this is basically we're generating the URL wh where the service lives. So if I paste that, awesome. And last, we're going to say false for that Boolean. Okay, so we have got the service service locator. Now we need to generate the stubs, which be administration uh, service oops, soap, binding stub, awesome, binding stub, and we'll call that the soap binding stub, and it's really the request or the client, whatever you want to call it, and this is administration, uh, service soap binding stub, ASSL dot get administration service, and finish that off with a semicolon, 
Okay. So what it's telling us here is, hey, um, you're going to be creating a client, so we need to have uh, an exception handled here. So we're going to do this with a throws declaration. So throws service exception, we'll have to handle, um, or not that, but there's another area where we're going to have to create a try catch when we actually call stuff, right? <laughs> right. We're going to have to uh, do a try and catch around that. So we'll get to that point when we get to it. But now that we have the client, we need the to build the request object, the response, and the person. So request object first, administration, service, response. And I could probably type in the word response and get there quicker. So why don't we do that? Administration, service, request. We're going to do the request first. I might have said response, but... We always want the, well, we don't always. I'm just going to build the request first here. Equals request. New admin administration service request. Next one we're going to be building is the response admin administration. What if I type in that? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Administration service response. We'll call it response. New. I could probably just do this. Ha, nice. All right, administration service response. And last but not least, we need the person. So administration person. And kind of funky here, um, administration, let's make this a little administration person. Uh, so this person that I'm creating here is the person that we're logging in. It's kind of funny. It says administration person. You think, oh, this is the person that's logging in to make the web service call because it's called administration person. But no, um, administration just kind of refers to the administration service that we're calling and uh, we're, um, we're generating that person. So the person that we're logging in to Yellowfin. So now that we have that, let's build the actual request. And if you remember from the wiki, I need the login ID. Uh, <laughs> and I don't want to get it. I want to set it. Set login ID. So there's nothing to get at this point. And the, again, this is the person that is actually uh, calling the web service. It's not the person we're logging in to Yellowfin. So I'm going to do the admin at yellowfin.com.au. This is whatever email address you're deeming as, or whatever user you are deeming as your, um, as your designated web service caller, <laughs> I guess. So we're going to set their user ID. We need to also set their password. And I have a super secret password here. Awesome. Oops. Now we need to pass in the org ID. Org ID. We want to set the org ID. And we're going to set that to new integer. Remember, always set it to one integer one. Awesome. And now that we have the login ID, we have the password, we have the org ID, we need the actual function, right? So what are we telling Yellowfin to do? We're telling it, we want to set function, and we're telling it to login user. Now, this could be login user, no password. And that would basically say you don't have to set the password for the person. So if I was to do this, I need to create my person. So person dot set user. ID. I'm going to log in myself here. So tom.linton at yellowfin.bi. Uh, I could just set that, say request.person. Whoops. Person, set person equals person. So I could do this and that would work. But uh, if you remember in the, where am I going here? In the scroll up login user no password, we have to enter this. So this value into the configuration database for Yellowfin and specifically the configuration table. So again, we'd have to put one system simple authentication true into the configuration table for the login user no password to work. This is probably what you'd want to do in production to not have a password here. Um, because if you think about the flow, Let's say Bobby Joe has logged into your application, which is, you know, foobar.com. He's already authenticated, right? He's passed a username and password. So he has authenticated. Why do we need to pass a username and password again to Yellowfin when we're calling the single sign-on when he does something like click on analytics? 
um, there's really no need. It's That would be like double authentication. You can certainly do that by using the login user uh, function here, and that will require a password. So I'd have to put person dot set password and we'll set that to a password. We'll do it this way so you can see what it's like um, doing the set password. We might be able to do it the other way. I can't remember if I have that value already turned on in my database or not, but we'll find out. We know how that manifests. If I don't have it turned on in my database, it's gonna return error code 26. Okay, so we set the user ID, set the password of the person we are logging in to Yellowfin. We have attached that to the request. So now we need to actually make the request. So it's going to be response equals the soap binding stubs SBS dot uh, remote administration call. And we need to pass in the request. Okay, um, so we have this. This is telling us, and this is where I said we'd have to handle it because we're actually making a request. So. I could add another throws declaration, but I'm just gonna surround with a try catch in this case, make my life easier here. So we'll try that. And what I also want to do is print out some stuff from that response. So system.out.println, awesome. We wanna print out first in the response, we want response uh, get status code, right? Get status code because we want to see hey was this a success or a failure uh you know we'll start with this and we'll add some more so we can see uh, more as i go down the list so let's go ahead and run this and yeah warning whatever i didn't initialize it right awesome so here's what we got we have a success that means i successfully called the web service and it returned back some information for me let's see what information we're actually interested in so system dot out dot println print lin come on give me there it is dot print lin and we want to print this time the response dot um get login session id there we go so that's the session id that we're going to need and what i want to do in the beginning of this is say uh i want it to give me i want to actually highlight what this is so this is the uh, what do we want to call it? Let's call it the Yellowfin session and do that. So that way we know what that is. Awesome. Because what I want to highlight here is there's actually another session variable. And for the life of me, I totally blanking on what it does. But we're going to call this, we'll just call it the other session. Because what I'm highlighting here is there's two sessions and if you accidentally select the other session when you're trying to build re response dot get session ID. Um, so if I accidentally used this session ID to build that URL where I'm going to redirect the user when they try and you know log into Yellowfin or hit the analytics area of your application, it's going to fail. You need to use the login session ID, not get session ID. So I just want to show the difference between the two. There are two ones. We'll go ahead and run this and boom, there we go. So here's the Yellowfin session, the one you actually want to use. And here's that other session. So just make sure you're using Yellowfin session. Um, that's always important. And then, you know, let's also talk about the error codes. So system dot out. Should just copy this stuff, shouldn't I? Let's be efficient here. But we want response dot get air whoops get air code so what we're going to highlight here is i'm going to get a zero for the air code just first off because zero just means there was no error it was a success so if i bring up the wiki and i click on list of exceptions this is going to help you diagnose what you did wrong so zero no error Let's throw an error here. So what I'm gonna do is mess up my password on purpose and try and run this. And you'll see now, look at that, null for session ID, I got a failure, and I got error code 25. So what is error code 25 as I just minimized that? Error code 25 is could not authenticate user. So that just tells me that I got, well, my username or password wrong. In this case, I know I got my password wrong. We just messed that up on purpose. So let's go ahead and make that right. And now we're good. Um, 
Oh, and I promised you we would run the login user no pass word. And I, again, I can't remember if I have everything right um, in my configuration database, meaning if I added that line of code or not. But let's find out here. So let's log them in with no password. And I got a success. So obviously in my database, I do have that configuration value in there. And so Yellowfin's allowing me to log in Tom Linton without the password. And this is probably what you want to do. This is the part of your code that you'd want to make dynamic. So instead of just hard coding Tom Linton, I would want to take co the context the, that I've gotten maybe from, uh, maybe you've stored the user the user's email in a session or something like that. I just want to pass that in. So it might look something like, you know, username or something like that. This would just be like a Python version of it, or I think even .NET does the squigglies here if I was going to grab the context. Um, so anyways, this is where you'd want to make things dynamic, is put that where I have Tom Linton at yellowfin.bi. So we have made a successful call to Yellowfin. But now, what did we do? All we did was just get a session. So what do I do with this session? Well, we actually need to build the URL. So if I go back here to the single sign-on, developer toolkit, web services, admin services, single sign-on, and let's click on the login user. There is a prefix, meaning the, the first part of the URL, which is right here, that I need to be able to pass the token in. So essentially what I'm trying to do here is build this and then place that token that I got from the web service call at the end. So I'll just copy this here. We'll paste this in to our Eclipse. All right. And let's just, I'll just create, we'll do a system.out again. Control C, there we go. Bow. And what I'm gonna do in the beginning is toss this in. Oops. <laughs> Come on. We copied it here and then we copied another thing. All right. Let's do that again. There we go. So I have that. Need to put my server, which is local host. And I got to put 7073 um, because I don't have any port forwarding going on. And here's where I put that token. So what I would do is this and plus and response dot get login session ID. Copy that, delete, 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 paste. Awesome. So this is the URL that I'm gonna redirect the person to after we've successfully authenticated. So of course I'd have like an if statement here. So if the get status code here equals success, then redirect to this. If not, do something else, right? That would be some, some good coding practice there. But what I'm doing here is I've built the URL. This is what you're going to redirect. So they click on, say, analytics in your application, and it runs a JSP page. And that JSP page calls the, the web. It actually looks like this. It calls the web service to log someone in. And then at the very end of the JSP page, you run a redirect to this URL here. So when I run this, let's see what this looks like. There it is. I'll just copy this. We'll prove that it's going to log me in by actually doing it. And there we go. It logged me in. And now this is what I was talking about with the org ref. We did not set an org ref, so I can choose which client I want to log into. So simply select log in and now I'm in. Um, so that that's always an option there to do it this way where it'll still allow me to choose what org I want to log into. However, just go ahead and log out here. What I can do instead is just set the org, rest, uh, org ref in the request. So I could say request dot org ref, org ref, there it is, set org ref. And Mine is, I think one of them is two. So this number or text or whatever is going to relate when you're creating the client org. And let's just bring it up here. When I create the client org, I like to show things if you haven't, uh, if you couldn't tell already, I like to show things because there's too many tutorials out there where you're looking at them and like the most important thing that you're missing, they decide to gloss over for some reason. It always seems to happen that way. So I just like to show it all. 
So when you're setting up client organizations, click on client organizations here, and we'll delete this one. You know, that's an actual client organization uh, that we were messing around with. So client two here, I have given them a reference ID of two. This would be the client reference ID that may be in my database or you know, that would be a best practice to make it the same, but I could use CL1 or two, and these are not numbers, these are strings. So that's why I'm doing that two, not as a new integer two, it's a string, it's two. So now if I, I'm gonna log out again here. If I rerun this, I did that set org ref to two. Oh, and failure. So what this is saying is that uh, I don't have access to that org ref. So I think the other one was, what was it, like CL1 possibly? Let me see if that actually gives us a positive. Yep, so I did have access. So I didn't have access to the number two one, but I have access to client one. So that's why we saw that different there that could not, we had the 25 error code, which is could not authenticate. So now if I take this URL, go back to my browser here, paste it in. It's not gonna ask me which client org I wanna sign into. It signed me into that client org already as you see here in the top right corner. Okay, so I think that about covers it for a uh, single sign-on with Java. Um, you saw those libraries that I had to add for dependencies. Again, you can create that web, uh, web service client however you want to. I'm just leveraging what Yellowfin already has. Um, it makes my life easier, probably make your life a lot easier as well. But anyways, um, that is how you do it. I believe, let's see, we covered the org references. So if you need to log into a specific client org, we talked about how you diagnose, you know, if you're getting errors, you get that status code for a failure and then get error code gives you the specific failure that you're seeing. Um, and then go to that wiki page where you can check out the list of exceptions. If you have any other questions or still need help with this kind of stuff, reach out to your client success manager and they can get you in touch with somebody like me, a consultant here to help you diagnose what the heck is going wrong. Um, you know, shouldn't be that hard. As you saw here, we were able to write all this stuff. It was about a, probably a 30 minute video when all said and done here, but uh, I like to be very thorough on, on what I do. So thank you for tuning in. Please stay tuned. I'm sure we will have more web service videos. Maybe do something on the report web service. We only touched the administration web service here. Um, but uh, please stay tuned. And we'll see you next time.